Yeah. Yes. All right, it's definitely an honor. 14 years, can you imagine? I just posed and saw Hershey's daughter and grandchild. And two, 12 years ago, Larissa was dancing on the stage. And I watched the family grow and uh, going back 30 years. And it's been an honor to come back every year and to, to be with the students and the faculty and then the community people. And it's a ritual. You know, it's like coming home. And the day would be easy because most of the time, this time of the year, usually it's raining here. And I tell Mukti, I think of her every time she comes pick me up, Mukti can open the door with an umbrella. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so one year, last year, no umbrella was sunny, I didn't recognize her. <laughs> <laughs> but coming back is always a joy. And uh, we're getting older, the kids are getting bigger. And the college has a wonderful energy because these students are always useful, you know, so creatively wonderful. And as Hirsch was saying, he said international families are outreach and so many cultures come together. And I am very honored to come back and it's used what I have learned in my over 62 years of coming. I came here to America in 1955. How many years? 60, 62 years. Yeah. As a young college student, I've been here back and forth and all over the world many times. But this is my heart of country. And uh, I use my Chinese culture and my learning of all the Western culture to find kind of synthesis. I think in the college atmosphere, especially, especially in Evergreen, you have all this different culture. We have, uh, not only we have Shang Sen by Jesse. Jesse, where are you? It's remarkable. And it's remarkable. So, so many Western people go to China, fall in love with China, learn the language, and stay there, and be in touch with the culture, and bring back here to share with you how to look at other culture, have fun. Yeah, the, the translation, you get all these translations, uh, some of them are really funny. Uh, and uh, we, in fact, many years I take students to China, we collect all this wonderful, wonderful translations, but some of them are so endearing, some of them just outright fun. <laughs> but it's a different culture. And Shanghai is a very difficult art. Also, I know the Chinese opera, I was commenting on him, his opera was very good too. <laughs> but he has the language, he has musical quality, which makes this memory very fun. Thank you for, for starting the laughter for us. And then we have those students and young people dancing in different culture. We brought the Tang Dynasty music, the Gakaku and Bukaku, and, and uh, the rituals of spring and the festivity, and watching the young people performing is just wonderful. So I think we're all very fortunate to be here to share this. Actually, exact, this is February 3rd, right, this year. In, the, in this year's Chinese lunar calendar, this is actually the first real beginning of spring. In China, we call a New Year festival called Chun Jie, means Spring Festival. It's the beginning to realize spring is finally will be coming soon. It's beginning, the winter is beginning to fade, spring is coming. And many of you know our Chinese has 12 cycles of animal powers. And last year, how many of you were here last year? Remember the Monkey King monkey performance? That's great. We had a special performer from Beijing also, and the student was doing the monkey, including Persia himself was dancing the monkey dance. It was wonderful, and this year we have another performance. Yeah. So, every year, that's the animal power gives us a lot of learning. And this year, everybody knows it's called the year of the rooster. But I want to make a distinction for you. Uh, rooster is a translation of Chinese symbol called qi. This is Qi, say Qi. Qi is a picture of a winged spirit. Uh, can be a, a rooster, can be a hen, can be a little chicken, can be a bird, can be anything that has a wings, okay? And the whole idea of this particular winged year is to help you to learn from so-called domestic chicken only see the feet in front of you, keep picking for feet. In fact, the chickens sometimes get so atrophy their wings cannot even fly anymore. Okay, think about those little wings. 
and it can even get to many bushes. But I want, want to help you to understand, I want to show you some of the calligraphy. The Chinese symbols are so wonderful. To show you how you can use a symbol, use a metaphor to learn through the nature, through animal power every year. Okay, say ji, say ji again. Ji, ji. This is the year of ji, ji nian, ji nian. It's much more than just a rooster with cocky ear. <laughs> rooster only crow a lot. Rooster is, make, make, they wake you up in the morning, but it, it, it too much, sometimes too much macho energy, which is only a rooster. It's good for rooster to crow to wake you up in the morning. But we forget this hair and lay eggs. There's a little chickies that are so sweet, wonderful, and all kinds of birds learning how to use their wings. So I want to begin with one Chinese symbol for you to start talking about this wonderful learning. And eventually then I'll do something else. First, always have a red red chart for me, hoping I will do something really special in key. <laughs> in the middle. So, so please be collecting whole bunch of calligraphy since I've been here. We even have a huge exhibition one time. It came down the big canvas for me and made a huge brush for me to show you to buy. How many years ago, Bush? That was yeah. You came you came down to go beach and, and brought made out a big, big wood broom we got a brush made. And there's a huge event we came to the student union. Okay. Alright. Now the first one I want to show you is this one. Some of you have been here before so you know how what kind of reaction this just happened when they this is a wow moment. Say, wow. I know the answer is wow. wow. Now, it's, it's, about, it's about you, not about me, okay? I know it's getting pretty good because I've been practicing since I was a child. <laughs> but, okay. but for you, it's to wow for yourself, to see something different. When you do wow, it's beyond your limitation. Now put your hand over your head. Now you put your finger together, that's your little halo. That's limited. That's as, as long as your arms can touch. That's your little halo. That's as much light you have. Now go like this. Wow. Suddenly you open your halo, your aura change. Okay. Suddenly you go up to the ceiling, beyond the ceiling, you go to the night sky, and you have a whole different energy. That your energy change. Okay. This coming weekend we're going to work on more on chi and all these magic we call chi gong tai chi. But here, I just want to show you, this is so limited. The idea of learning is always you want to begin practicing how to expand yourself, expand your energy. Now, after you have a wow, which means what I'm doing here is beyond the bread chart, because I never close the circle. It's another ancient Chinese calligraphy learning is you never close the circle, because once you close the circle, you are combined. If you don't close the circle, it means everything I do is beyond the bread this is the little halo, this is beyond the halo. Now this is a symbol I want you to learn. On top, it looks like a pair of wings. <laughs> okay? Little wings, a pair of wings. Now, if you only look at that, you pronounce it, <laughs> it means wings. And if you put another symbol combined into a composite, it becomes xi in Chinese. Xi means practice. This learning practice. A pair of new wings learning to be innocently learning to fly. See? Literally means practice, also means learning to flap your wings. Uh, right now we're dealing with a lot of controversy, political, uh, international controversy about the rising power of China. Okay? Um, we have something's coming. <laughs> It's not about competition, never competition. It's about another culture, another place. We are, the world doesn't have boundaries, basically. When you look down from the sky to the earth, there's no boundary, no passport necessary. There's no nationality boundary. The world is, we are all earthlings, we human beings. Okay? And sometimes, politically, nationally, we get into trouble. But I want to give you something very nice for those of you who are questioning about what China could be for America or the world. 
Currently, the Chinese leader has a wonderful name, which is very hopeful. His last name is Xi. Literally, he's practicing to be a leader. Xi, X-I, we looked at Xi is his last name. And his real given name is called Jingping, Xi Jingping. Jing is close to peace. He's practicing to get closer to peace. Pretty good name for a leader. Hopefully, he will live up to his name. Okay? Yeah, Xi Jinping is his name. But I just want to make that connection to something you see in the newspaper. You will hear more about China and America, China and the world. You will have this picture's name always listed about the leader of China. Think of him practicing closer to peace. Let's, let's wish for all leaders in the world practicing closer to peaceful. How's that? Let's transcend our personal judgment, transcend whatever side you are on in the world. Let's hope for world harmony. Okay? Chinese called Si Jie Da Everything under the sky is in harmony. So let's borrow the name. And this is the year of learning how to flap your wing. That's Xi. That's what it means practice. So everybody needs to practice how to be more pure, more innocent, more childlike, again and again, like a little bird coming out of the nest, learning to fly. Okay, that's she. Now let me, since we only have this evening for some of you, let's jump, jump a little bit, go fast. If you practice well, okay, let me do another simple for you, which you like. You practice your way. Wow. So you wow. have to do that in another chance. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. Wow. Wow. So some ladies just more energetic because you allow the body to express other than what it's going to talk to me. Okay, okay you're going to be crossing your legs with your arms folded. Open your arms. So do it again. Wow. Wow. You become more receptive. You're much more there in communication with what I'm doing to you. You will really see much, much more of this. Okay, let me give you another favorite symbol of mine. This one is a little beautiful. This, again, the idea of a wing. Mm -hmm. This, another pair of wings going upward. Chinese pronounce fei. Say fei. means flight. Take off. Flight. Okay, this is a little pair of wings. Look, now this pair of wings finally ascend, take off. Now by the way, this is the original Chinese way of writing, which unfortunately in the past 60 some years in mainland China, they have simplified the language. I think, Jesse, when you learn Chinese in Beijing, and they, you are learning Jian Di Zi, simplified, and in fact, they, they don't write always like everything in there anymore which I will talk more with you either tonight or tomorrow or this weekend to show you the difference. When we simplify things, we take things off away, most importantly. But this, you can see, see these are two flapping wings. And this, in the middle of this one means ascension. The wings ascend. When you can ascend with your wings, you take off, you fly. So this is she. Practice this, you take off and fly. Now these are symbols in China in connected to not only you practice for the energy, you practice for the beauty of the balance, but you also see the symbolic meaning which is intrinsically give you energy, give you power. You can enter into it and become that energy. And when I teach calligraphy, we dance, we move. We don't just do a tiny, we do big ones. We use the whole body. Okay? Those of you already, would you, at least in your seat, now, can you just do, do the stroke with me in your own way, a little more modified without hitting your neighbors, okay? <laughs> All right, can you, ah, ha, 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 ah, ha, 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 you know it's how the whole body gets you out of the door. You can sort of feel it with me, okay? Don't just look at me, feel it.
as a young bird, as a young child, yeah. beginning exactly, oh, he's ready to get together. <laughs> <laughs> pick out the tea. Okay. And then, and then, flight, fake, this question, fake or like this. Okay, I'll do, I'll do it once, you see it, and then we'll do it together, and we'll do it again. Okay. Ah! Guess what happened to the moon? Disappears. Woo. 
the monkey says, my monkey mindset, the moon is there, let me reach again. It's gone, but it's there. So monkey can hold on to the monkey mind forever, insist the moon is in the water. And in the Chinese Zen poetry, it says, the monkey is reaching for the moon in the water until death, that monkey will never give up. Monkey is stubborn. The monkey mind is stuck. You can spend all your life insist on the alternative facts. <laughs> Until you release the clutching and get wet, suffer the baptism, you, the wet monkey, look up. Ah, there's the moon. In Chinese, it's called Dunmu. In Japanese, it's called Satori. Sudden enlightenment, Satori. Satori, yes, exactly. Satori, a sudden awareness of the real truth. But so often we are under a haze. We are holding on to our dogma, our belief system. We forget to cleanse ourselves by releasing and dip into deep stream and come out fresh. The practice of an innocent bird is about the pureness of a childlike mind. A beginner, a humble energy, a gregarious, simple energy that we all need to cultivate. This rooster year, we need to know we can crow loud, we can say cock a doo doo a lot, but we also need to learn other aspects of how to transcend the limitation of our winged spirit. This shirt I made. 12 or 24 years ago, I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, it was the last time, 12 years ago, 24 years ago, during the rooster year of the bird, I did this one. What I did was that year, I wrote the word for T, but I made, made the bird side to a wing that literally go further out to so hit further. So what happens, I also use a rainbow spectrum to show the, the unlimited energy of a bird I call it the winged spirit. And that year, I especially remind my students not to get trapped like the little chicken only peck, peck the little meager feet in front of the nose and never see the world beyond, right in front of you. Okay, everybody do a little imitation. Let you know what the world is right here. Just a little feet. You will spend all your life doing this. And your wings get smaller and smaller and smaller between feet, then you atrophy. If you have a little wing like this, you, <laughs> you may be a bird, but you cannot fly. You have no wings. You have no wings. You are not using your nature. You are not fulfilling your natural potential in life. So that was the beginning of, of this learning. And after 24 years, still the same learning, still the same teaching. We are still get trapped into our meager feet in the middle, in front of our eyes. We all fall into that trap all the time. We are very slow learners, human beings. We must accept the fact, so much to learn. Okay? As, I, as I get older, as you get older, you have to admit, not that many years left, you, you don't learn, you're really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> At least you have to become a little bit wiser. But to be wise, you've got to be humble, you've got to have humility, you've got to be a child again. Okay. So I want to finish to create something here in the middle, on the red. I'm going to redo the symbol of G. Yeah, it's that when you first see how it can come out in this red one. And then we all dance it, and then we're going to play some nice music and learn some basic Qigong Tai Chi movement. To start your year of that year of the week. Alright? Alright, let's take a moment, just collect your energy. Would you all sit up a little straighter? Uh, see if you cannot, do not lean on the back of your chair, but a little more forward so you can feel your feet, the sole of your feet touching the ground. And allow your spine to go upright a little more. So you can feel your buttock on your seat, your feet has weight on the ground. Do not only use the chair to support your weight. See if you can feel the weight also in touch with the earth under your feet. 
and just your body accordingly. So in a very wonderful upright sitting position. Yeah. Good. So don't lean back and at the same time use your crown chakra. Use your, this we call sun dantian, upper dantian. And at the top we have this metaphor of the golden lotus opening. Think of a blossom opening to the light, the crown. We call bai hui in Chinese. And then think about the energy keep coming down from your spine all the way to your buttocks and down your legs, between the legs, the empty space into the earth. Okay, just feel that connection between heaven and earth. Okay, let's use a couple of Chinese symbols. And uh, the first one I want to teach you to make it say Tian Sang. Say Tian Sang. Tian Sang. Up in the sky, sky up there. Tian Sang. Yeah, in fact, let's reach up in the sky. Put your hands up. Tian Sang. Tian Sang. Your arm to come a funnel right now. The, the, the funnel here brings the sky chi coming down to the body and enter into the crown chakra, right here. Okay? Bai Hui. So open up, say Tian Sang. Tian Sang. And as you drop your arm slowly, and you can feel the energy, the chi, begin to seep down from the top of your head into your brain, into your mouth, and through your throat, into your heart, into your five organ, major organs, and all the way into your abdomen, and between the legs, buttocks, and go into the earth as your feet touch the earth. Okay, since we do a lot of talk about China, why don't we take all the way to China, okay? <laughs> Now imagine the space between the legs, your feet, underneath the concrete foundation. Just feel the connection of the sky chi through your body, go into the earth, keep going, keep going, all the way to the upper side of the globe. Somewhere there is China. We do have that opposite side, east and west are flip side. So let's take all the way to China, okay? Imagine you are connected to China, the other side of the earth, through the earth, come through the body, back to Olympia, right here in the longhouse. And the chi will seep up, not only through your legs, from the bottom of your feet, into your legs, to your torso, up to the crown, but also through the space between the legs as you sit. Make your body feel transparent, flowing clear. So you are simply the channel of powerful energy we call Qi, heaven above, earth below. Now remember the Chinese sky of Tian Shan. Tian Shan. Tian And then you go to the opposite, say Di Xia. Di Xia. Di Xia means earth below. Tian Shan. Tian Shan. Di Xia. Di Xia. Tian Shan. Tian Shan. Now as you, before you say Di Xia, imagine Channel the chi all the way down the body, guide it through the crown, into your head, down the throat, into your heart, through your vital organs, into your lower chakra, lower abdomen, between the legs, into the thighs, into the knees, into calves and shin bones, into your insteps, underneath the instep, we call your chuan bubbling spring, and then go all the way down, allow the earth energy bubbling up into the instep of your yong chuan. Make your body the open channel for something much more powerful than your own little limited me, me, me little energy. If you open yourself up, you suddenly become more than who you are. So much more you can connect other than just me, me, me. Excellent. All right. Now, would you slowly bring your hands up with the fingertips almost touching now from the pubis in front of the lower abdomen. Slowly guide the chi up center, up the torso, past the navel into your chest, heart, throat, nose, third eye. Touch the crown chakra, touch the top. And then allow the chi to push your fingers open and shoot up to the sky. Ah. <laughs> now, arms up there, open your hands. You can feel the chi coming between the fingers. You can feel the center of your palm opening to receive the chi. Now, if you just soften your wrist, soften your elbow, soften your shoulder, you are receptive to the energy coming into you. 
You don't have to do anything, just be receptive. You will come. You no need for you to reach for it. Just open to receive it. It's coming to you anyway. Just open for it. And slowly drop your arms, rest them in front of your legs. And just sit tall and relax and smile. And say, aha. <laughs> <laughs> Just relax it. Uh -huh. uh -huh. <laughs> a relaxed body opens up and receives power. A relaxed body clears all the congestions, makes you at ease with yourself. Otherwise, you are diseased, you will have diseases. Tension, anxiety, tightness in the body. Make your mind tight, make your heart tight, makes you sick, body, mind, and spirit. And everything is connected. That's why Tai Chi, Qigong, and all the physical exercise we are so clear now, so helpful for your well-being. It's become so powerful. If you look up all the New England Journal of Medicine, go to Harvard School, Medical School, UCLA recently again from the kinesiology department and keep saying Tai Chi, Tai Chi, Qigong is the best for you. Seems to cure all diseases, like fancy up everything. It's not because something Chinese, it's because it promotes the ease of your flow. Physically, emotionally, psychologically, intellectually, spiritually, they are all part of the whole thing we call Tao. Flow, water, course. Now that is the basic philosophy. Nothing that unique and different. Nothing to do with just being Chinese. Any wise person from all cultures would know that. And you have experienced that in the last 10, 15 minutes, haven't you? <laughs> haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not something you have to go to a master set for 15 years. And of course, with dedication, usually people learn faster with more humility. But it's not that difficult if you're willing to practice. So this weekend, my teaching for you is to share with you my learning. Learn how to practice. Simply, easily, with the basic philosophy, you can understand, you can identify. So first you begin with the innocent flapping your wings constantly. You keep forgetting how to do it. And then you get a little success in the time. You actually can take off a few inches off the ground. Eventually you have the sensation of flying. And eventually you can soar the spirit of soul. And then everywhere you go now like in Chinatown, everywhere, and you will see this symbol or the Chinese New Year's card, you will have the symbol of Ji, Ji Nian Ke Nian Ji. The symbol of Ji basically shows a winged creature 